So uh, I'm Len Casuto. I'm a professor of English and American Studies at Fordham University. And it occurred to me not that long ago, I was thinking, and I realized that I've been a college teacher for more of my life than I haven't been one. And this perhaps entitles me the possibility of reflecting a little bit. I've had uh, a lot of teachers along the way. I've had some good ones and some bad ones, and I've learned a lot from the bad ones as well as the good ones. But when you ask me who my most important teacher was, I realize that my most important teacher is the teacher that I've had for the longest. And the teacher that I've had for the longest, I should perhaps I should say teachers, are my students. I've been learning from my students for as long as I've been in the classroom, and I remember the, uh, the intimidation with which I approached the job when I was only a little bit older as a graduate student than the undergraduates that I was teaching, and it was nerve-wracking, that experience, and I tried to meet it by controlling it. It was, I didn't want to be uh, shocked by a question I didn't know the answer to, and exposed as somebody who was too young to, um, to be in the, in the space that I was occupying. And so I was much more of an authoritarian when I first started out. I, didn't, I was running discussions, but I was running them in ways that I realized was, were designed to stay in territory that was familiar to me so that I wouldn't be surprised. And of course, the fact that I was setting it up that way, if I'm not going to be surprised, it also means that I'm not going to learn as much. I learned how to teach. I learned how to run a discussion. But as I got older and I became more confident, more relaxed, and also older than, than my students who stayed remarkably the same age as I aged, uh, I became a little bit more able to listen to the kinds of things that they were telling me both in words and not in words. And I became more sensitive to the kind of community that I was in with them and that I was responsible for building with them. And over time, I realized, teaching them American literature and culture, that uh, I was learning a lot about how to be part of intellectual communities of give and take in which my students and I would be able to learn from each other. And that gradual realization, that, that, um, that evolution in my practice as I became more comfortable, more confident, more relaxed in it, started, as, they, as these things will, to shape the work that I was doing outside of the classroom itself. Because as, as an academic, I'm a researcher as well as a classroom teacher. And my research began to reflect, over time, my interest in the way that classroom communities form and cohere and evolve. And this growing, uh, growing knowledge, this growing realization, coincided in part with my emergence as a journalist and a freelance writer in addition to a scholar. And I began to write, uh, write journalism about teaching itself. My first freelance piece of freelance writing was about the experience of graduate students in graduate school. And that subject uh, became something that stayed with me. It, uh, it was like, uh, like a burr, initially like a burr that wouldn't come off. Uh, I kept returning to it. And then gradually I've embraced it. I've, I've been writing a regular column for the Chronicle of Higher Education now for over a decade on, the, uh, uh, on graduate school. It's called The Graduate Advisor. And that column has led to my last two books, one of them called The Graduate School Mess, and the most recent one, called The New PhD, How to Build a Better Graduate Education. Both of these books and a great many of my, of my newspaper columns stem from the idea that 
we in higher education ought, as I have learned to myself, be more attentive to the things that we can learn from our students and also how our, how our students' needs ought to be shaping the way that we run our enterprise. So student-centered graduate education has been one of the key phrases that has guided a lot of my work over the last 10 years or so. And it may seem student-centered graduate education, I mean, why shouldn't education be student-centered? But graduate education becomes a particular flashpoint for this. There's a way in which it's true for uh, undergraduate education as well, but shouldn't we be starting from the needs of, the needs of students? Isn't, isn't this common sense? But in fact, the higher education enterprise in the United States, particularly the graduate enterprise, is ha historically it has not been student-centered. There are uh, yards of books on how to teach undergraduates. There are almost no books on how to teach graduate students. What that tells us is something that history also tells us, which is that historically, graduate education is faculty-centered. Teaching graduate students has historically been viewed as a sidecar attached to the main engine, which is faculty research. Now, faculty research is obviously important. I treasure my own, and I know that my, my colleagues do as well. But there is a way that faculty research not only can, but I think needs to engage more, uh, um, more, in a more integrative way with the kinds of imperatives that students, graduate and undergraduate alike, have as they contemplate entering a complicated world after they leave the university. Now, there are, there are many aspects to this that uh, I elaborate in a lot of my work, but ultimately, I'm trying to create a vision and elaborate that vision of a, a, of a higher education that integrates and unites the, uh, the needs and the desires of faculty with the needs and the desires of students. And that is a, a, a project. It's engaged me happily for some time and will for some time longer. It's a project that emanates, I realize, from the most important teachers that I have had in my life as a teacher. Not, and I, I refer to my students.